Hey, everybody, what's going on? What's hot? What's hip? What's happening? What is shaking on your hump day? We hope that you are having... Wow, I accidentally blocked up a, somebody's bathing suit with my microphone. I wonder how I can fix that. I probably can... Hold on a second. I don't feel like depriving you guys. Eh, I'm not going to mess with it. It'll just ruin everything. Believe me, there'll be plenty of that later because I'm going to tell you about Battle of the Network Stars, which was, <laughs> uh, if you were a teenager back then, it was a really good show. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, I uh, hope you're having a great hump day. We here at the Tom Gully Show, as always, hope you are getting the full, total, and complete amount of hump that you so rightfully crave and so desperately deserve or something along those lines. I don't know. Um you can go to the Tom Gully Show.com and you can see or hear seven, uh, 270 podcasts, one of which is bound to entertain you for at least five minutes. Uh, and also at that website, you can go to our merch store, which has uh, exciting things like the 20 ounce mug or the 11 ounce mug, that's your standard size mug, or the clock. Uh, hold on. The clock, he said. Clock, yes, the clock. There's a bunch of stuff there. There's hats, there's a shower curtain, there's things, you know, you really don't need, but they got my logo on them, so why don't you get one? Uh, you can also go to paypal.me slash Tom Gully Show, which you might need to do, because I got some bad news. That's not bad news, it's just it's just disappointing news about our March to 3,000 hours viewed. Uh, and uh, all the good stuff's down there in the crawl, so please do that. But what we need to do, really need you to do, is like, share, and subscribe, and retweet, and do all those things. Because they don't cost you anything and they help us a lot in the algorithm of the various social media platforms. So I looked today at our hours and it said that last night's show only got four hours. But then under that it says we are currently experiencing some difficulties in our database updating all of the... Blah, 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 blah. Which means they don't have an accurate tally for me, for you, for anybody. They're supposed to be helping, but they're not helping. They're supposed to be helping, but they're not helping. They're really not helping. Let me get through just a few of these chats, and then we're going to go into uh, Battle of the Network Stars, which I'm pleased to tell you, I'm going to take the risk and do transformative reaction uh, video because there ain't no photos of this that aren't licensed Sunday driver on a Wednesday exactly Sunday Jenna and who would know better than you so uh, Woody from Syracuse good to see Woody here he's awesome uh, oh hey our benevolent master of ceremonies I don't know about master but there will be ceremonies people saying hello to each other uh, Woody says preteen but I remember how unbelievably bad TV was in the 70s well this is good bad it may indeed be bad but it's good bad and I'll, and I'll show you that shortly. Cheerful chat room gully. That's me. We always have a cheerful chat room here. Like, share, retweet, text, mail, pigeon. You name it. That's right. Uh, smoke signal. Anything. Uh, Hugh says everybody ought to get yourself a mug. They're worth it. Thank you, Hugh. They are top quality mugs. And Sunday Jenna got a shirt and a mug. And I expect a photo of Jenna wearing this shirt. And Joe, producer Joe, going, hey, all right, with the mug. Just send it to my uh, Facebook page uh, mail. Uh, Joker Fish says, hello to everybody. Chef is in the house. He is a certified chef out of Indianapolis, Indiana, the motorsports capital of the world and home to the greatest spectacle in racing. Uh, people saying hi. People saying, I will do, Tom. All right. I can, I'm counting on that. I'm counting on that. Aku says, made it just shut down the grill. Beautiful. I love it when a plan comes together. People saying hi. Lots of damn good people in the chat. Hope everyone's doing well. I agree, Wes Bravo. This is the finest assemblage of humans on the face of the planet. Lyndon says hello, all. What do we got here? We got 24 people in YouTube. We've got eight on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, and zero on Facebook. Curses, Facebook. I curse you. Um... Terry Nee says, they have amphibian size? Yes. We have reptile, amphibian, invertebrate. Uh, Hammond said, this show makes me feel young. Good. That's what it's supposed to do. 
Julian Zeter says, I thought the Tour de France was the greatest spectacle in racing. I think that's the Indianapolis uh, 500 is the greatest spectacle in racing. I'm sure the Tour de France has its own cool nickname, but that one, I think, is the uh, Indy 500. Aku says, welding a patch in, so I'll report when, not of, I catch fire, pray for my beard. Are you uh, arc welding or the other kind? Uh, Mike Herndon's here. Hello, Mike. He says hello from Virginia. Uh, Brett's Hollywood show, who is universally hilarious, says Sunday Jenna said I wasn't allowed to enjoy this fine program. Woody says I'm off for four days for my birthday. I am ready for enlightened conversation about Cosell's hairpiece and Mr. Cotter's fro. Well, Gabe Kaplan plays a very large role in the storied history of the um, Battle of the Network Stars. Rust welding. Okay. Uh, Brett, I warned you. Uh, happy birthday, Woody. Yes, very, very much so. Happy birthday, Woody. So here is, I'm going to get my thing ready. Uh, and, and this time, I'm going to have to rely heavily upon Wikipedia for your benefit, I might add. Um, let me tell you about Battle of the Network Stars. Uh, Battle of the Network Stars was a series of competition in which television stars, and I mean stars, from ABC, CBS, and NBC would compete in various sporting events. A total of 19 battles of the network stars were held between 1976 and 1988, all of which were aired by ABC. I'm not even going to discuss the attempted relaunches because they just don't matter. They, they just don't matter. I'm going to pretend those don't exist. So the first battle was broadcast on ABC in November of 1976. The program proved super popular, and it continued for an additional eight and a half years with subsequent air play about every six months until May of 1985. Now, at first, they did, they did it quite frequently because people went gaga for this. Uh, one final competition aired in December of 1988, I'm not going to talk about NBC trying to redo it because, come on, just forget it. Now, one of the coolest, best, and, and most entertaining things about Battle of the Network Stars was that uber-popular sports broadcaster turned multi-faceted and uh, loved as much as he was hated sportscaster uh, Howard Cosell hosted or co-hosted all but one of the first 19 competitions. He didn't do the 1985 one because he was having problems with ABC, but he did return in 1988 for the final. And he commented on the action in sort of a semi-serious version uh, of his regular sports casting gravitas and, uh, you know, imposing style of broadcasting. So he would lampoon almost what was going on and play it up for more than it was worth using the skills, the amazing skills he had to turn even a mundane football game or boxing match into something very dramatic. So Howard Cosell was a big deal uh, of this. All but one of the competitions took place in... Uh, Malibu, California, at Pepperdine University. The lone exception was held in Ixtapa, Mexico. I don't know why, and I didn't look into why, because I don't care why. Each network was represented by eight or ten of its stars from their various primetime series, and one of those people was elected to serve as the network team's captain. Okay, so the events were sort of taken from another super popular ABC show called The Superstars, which would take athletes from all different manner of sports, baseball, basketball, football, soccer, motorcycle racing, uh, track and field, uh, skiing. If, if it was a sport, they'd get the best athletes from that sport or athlete, if it was not that popular of a sport, and have them compete in sports that they were not known for like tennis or swimming or bike racing or the obstacle course, which was hugely popular, also on Battle of the Network Stars. So the events on Battle of the Network Stars, the regular events were 
uh, swimming, kayaking, volleyball. By the way, kayaking was always a disaster, a mess. It was always hilarious to watch. Volleyball, golf, tennis, bowling. Uh, and the bowling, by the way, was done on outdoor custom-made lanes. They did not do it at a bowling alley. They did it right there at the Pepperdine University. Um, cycling, three-on-three -three flag football, the baseball dunk tank, and now is a good time for me to pause and let you know that during the 70s, TV was very, uh, let's call it titillating. It was uh, tantalizing. It was um, scandalous to a certain extent. You had shows like Three's Company that were all sort of double entendre, uh, mild, sexual innuendo. But there was a lot of really gorgeous gals and guys on television in the 70s. Now, the baseball dunk tank was when they would get the, let's call them in the parlance of that time period, super hot babes, or perhaps more accurately to the time period, foxes, and they would be in the dunk tank and get dunked in their bathing suits, which would... I was 13 at the time. I don't think I have to explain any more than that. Uh, they had running. There was like a half mile race. And then there was the obstacle course. And when I tell you, no, 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 no. When I show you one of the most, the guy who dominated the obstacle course, you are not going to believe it. You simply will not believe it. Um, also featured as a regular event was a game of Simon Says, which was uh, kind of um, Simon basically was a famous Catskill hotel entertainer, Lou Goldstein, who was famous for doing Simon Says. Each network got points for how they performed in a certain event. And after the regular events were over, the lowest scoring of the three networks was dropped that's the special effects that I have for you today. Um, and the remaining two would compete in the final event, which was the tug of war. And that was always super popular. So I could go over the various, I mean, I could get real specific about how many people were on the roster for each of the battles. And I could get real specific about the actual events that were um, on the battles. I don't think that's going to really help anything. What I'd really like to do is take you on sort of a stroll of the people who were in the Battle of the Network Stars and show you, if I can do this little thing here that I think might make this better. Well, I'll just make myself teeny tiny like uh, a certain lawyer and I will share this screen and hopefully the uh, rollovers will be large enough for you guys to see actually who was you know on these shows if you indeed don't know who these people were or just want a better look at them I can tell you right now some of them I'm going to click on their Wikipedia page because the, the rollovers don't do them justice the pictures are too new don't have them in there. Let's say full glory, as it were. Yes, for you know posterity's sake. Yes, yes. Um, let me share the screen real quick, and then we'll get down to brass tacks. And so, let me just look at my own screen here real quick to make sure this is okay. Let me see what this is going to look like for you, because I I think this is going to work out the best. So for the very first one, which is November thirteenth, nineteen seventy six. Uh, Gabe Kaplan, who was from, and that's a terrible picture, but you know him as Mr. Cotter from Welcome Back, Cotter. Darlene Carr, again, terrible picture. She's the lower left-hand actress. Linda Carter, who was Wonder Woman. Can I say this again? Linda Carter, who was Wonder Woman. And then a little somebody called Farrah Fawcett Majors that you may have heard of. Uh, Richard Hatch, who was Battlestar Galactica and uh, the streets of San Francisco. Uh, Robert Hedges, who was Epstein on Welcome Back, Cotter. And then this fella here, Ron Howard, who was from Happy Days. 
uh, acclaimed director and Opie from, uh, you know, Andy Griffith's show. Hal Linden, who was Barney Miller. Uh, Penny Marshall, who you know from Laverne and Shirley. And John Shuck, who most of you guys won't know, but he was an actor. Uh, for CBS, Telly Savalas, Kojak, was the captain. Um, and um, Adrian Barbeau. I really kind of want to have to show you Adrian Barbeau. There's got to be a better picture of her than that. That's not a great Adrian. Man, Adrian Barbeau deserves a much better picture than that. Gary Berghoff from MASH. Kevin Dobson, who was also from Kojak. Uh, Pat Harrington Jr., who was Schneider on One Day at a Time. Bill Macy, who is known from Maud, was Maud's husband. Lee Merriweather. This is a terrible picture of Lee Merriweather. There has to be a better one. Um, well, here, here's uh, she was Catwoman in the movie, uh, Batman movie in 1966. But here she is in the time tunnel. She was a former Miss America. And, um, you know, 13-year-old Tom thought she was swell. Uh, Mackenzie Phillips from One Day at a Time. Loretta Swit, who you know from MASH. And Jimmy Walker, who was, of course, JJ on uh, Good Times. Um, the NBC team was captained by Robert Conrad. Now, Robert Conrad and Gabe Kaplan play a big part in one of the most seminal moments of Battle of the Network Stars that I will show you on video very shortly. But Robert Conrad was on the, he had a, he had a top 10 show in three different decades. He was on a, a Hawaiian Eye. Uh, and 77 Sunset Strip in the 50s. Then he was on the Wild Wild West in the 60s. And in the 70s, he was Pappy Boeington in Baba Black Sheep. And he was known as a tough guy. He famously did these TV commercials where he put a like an Ever Ready battery on his shoulder and said, go ahead, knock this off. I dare you. And he was known as a tough guy. And also he had been a stuntman early in his career. He was a tremendous athlete, which will really play into something that happened between him and Gabe Kaplan uh, on one of the episodes. Melissa Sue Anderson here and uh, Karen Grassley. Uh, Karen Grassley was the mother on um, Little House on the Prairie. Tim Matheson, who most of you will recognize as Otter in uh, uh, Animal House, but he was a very durable actor. He was actually the voice of Johnny Quest in the early cartoons. Ben Murphy here, who is also known to be a really good athlete and is part of the controversy that is between Gabe Kaplan and uh, Robert Conrad. Joanna Pettit, who um, she was an actress in some shows. Kevin Ty, who was on Emergency, but you might know him better as the club owner of the Double Deuce in the original Roadhouse movie. Uh, Bobby Troop, who was also on Emergency, and he was actually married to Julie London there in the picture. He was actually a singer that became an actor in that show and married to Julie London, so lucky, lucky man. And then there's Damon Wilson. So that's the kind of people that were in it. Now, the next Battle of the Network Stars had the same three captains, Gabe Kaplan, Telly Savalas, and Robert Conrad. And Gabe Kaplan, because he worked for ABC and because ABC was the network that broadcast these, he was the captain a lot from, from, for ABC. Let me go through here and see. Christy McNichol, uh, who was a major teen idol girl at the time, and Jacqueline Smith from Charlie's Angels was in this. Uh, for CBS, Sonny Bono of Sonny and Cher. You had Mike Farrell from MASH, Linda Lavin, who starred in the very popular sitcom Alice. You had Rob Reiner, who is now an acclaimed director and was Meathead on All in the Family, and Loretta Swit again. Uh, for NBC, Robert Conrad was the captain again. You had Elizabeth Allen, who was uh, an actress. Linda Day George, who was married to Christopher George and was seen as sort of a sex symbol, was on. Uh, Kurt Russell, if you can believe it. Kurt Russell 
<clears throat> was on Battle of the Network Stars. He had been a child actor and was in a TV show at the time. Jane Seymour, Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, uh, long before that series was on. Let me just go through these, and I'm going to kind of just pick out the most um, prominent ones that you might mention. I could, I could do this all day. But I'll just pick out the most prominent ones. Battle of the Network stars in 1977. Billy Crystal. You guys all know who Billy Crystal is, don't you? Yeah, of course, Billy Crystal. And then Cheryl Ladd, one of Charlie's Angels. And, you know, you, you knew you were going to get to see Cheryl Ladd in a bathing suit. So you watched the show. Um, Suzanne Summers from Three's Company, also on that program. Uh, Valerie Bertinelli, later Mrs. Eddie Van Halen, who starred in One Day at a Time. Let's see, Karen Kay, who is a retired actress now that was in some sort of skin maxi movies. Eleanor Donahue, I don't know, she, she had to be up there when they did this, but she was on uh, Father Knows Best and was, uh, I think, the first girlfriend of Andy Griffith on the Andy Griffith Show. Donna Mills, who was, uh, you can't even see her face, forget it, we won't even talk about Donna Mills. Um, let's just go through here. For the next one, Debbie Boone, who was Pat Boone's daughter and sang You Light Up My Life. That was her big claim to fame. Uh, Tony Tennille of The Captain and Tennille. And then, and this is a big one, Sports Illustrated supermodel Cheryl Teagues was on for ABC. Let's see here. We had Victoria Principal from Dallas for CBS. Bo Svensson, who was famous for Walking Tall, the movies. Um, Jane Curtin from Saturday Night Live was on for NBC, as was Melissa Gilbert from uh, Little House on the Prairie. And uh, let's see, let's go to the next year. Joyce DeWitt from Three's Company was on this. Lou Ferrigno, who is a famous bodybuilder and played the Incredible Hulk on the just terrible 70s TV show version of the Incredible Hulk. But this is a big one. Mr. David Letterman was on. He was a cast member on the Mary Tyler Moore show at the time and was a variety show. He was a writer for them as well. So he was actually on Battle of the Network Stars. And you can watch that whole thing. Tim Reed, who was Venus Flytrap on WKRP in Cincinnati. William Devane, who you'll see as a dramatic actor in just tons and tons and tons of movies. Uh, Pamela Hensley, who was a hottie that was on Buck Rogers in the 25th century. And then William Shatner was on Battle of the Network Stars because he was on T.J. Hooker. Now, I'm going to point this one out. Scott Bayo. That's going to become really important later on. Scott Baio. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go through these a lot faster here just to get us to the actual clips. Uh, Mary Crosby. Let's see here. Willie Ames. Robert Hayes. Max Gale. Oh, Shelly Smith, who is a famous supermodel, was on. Uh, Howard Hessman from WKRP in Cincinnati. Catherine Lee Scott, who freaks like myself will remember from Dark Shadows, the uh, TV series. Jan Smithers, who played Bailey Quarters on WKRP, was on this. Um, let's see. Randy Oaks. Oh, boy, Randy Oaks. Why don't they have a picture of her? Sarah Purcell, who was a uh, TV host at the time. John Wayne's son, Patrick Wayne, was also on this. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go through here and just get the most famous people I can possibly find. Um, these are mostly just TV start. Ooh, Phyllis Davis. Look out. Phyllis Davis was on this program and Jillian, uh, Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck was actually on battle of the network stars cause he was on Magnum PI. Uh, let's see, Julie Landers. Oh, I can get Judy. Let's see if they have a picture of her. They better. Judy Landers always played like a dumb blonde in all these TV shows. Uh, Linda Evans, Bo Hopkins, Tim Reed. Some really famous people, anyway, were on this particular uh, program. Let's see. No, Thomas, Andrew Stevens, Lorenzo Lamas, Fred Willard. Joan Collins, um, for those, oh, and Heather Thomas. Let me tell you something. They couldn't get enough of Heather Thomas on Battle of the Network Stars. Any excuse possible to get Heather Thomas 
they took advantage of that pretty heavily. Uh, let's see here. Joan and Ark, um, Bruce White. Mr. T was on Battle of the Network Stars and uh, did very well at Simon Says. Let's see. Adrian Zamed, please. Uh, Heather Locklear. Heather Locklear, who married some major rock stars. Uh, she also was a person they couldn't get enough of on that program, and she was on quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> quite a bit. Oh, let's see here. We're almost to the end of the good years of this, so uh, bear with me for just a second. Hey, Ted Lang, Isaac, your bartender on uh, Love Boat, he was on the program. Uh, let's see here. William Shatner was actually the captain of the team for uh, some of the years, as was Tony Danza from Taxi and uh, Who's the Boss? Angela! Um, Jennifer O'Neill, very famous actress, was uh, on the program. Let me see here if we've got any other biggies. Oh, there are, but there. I'm such a TV freak. All these people are, are uh, famous to me. Let's see, Rob. Oh, Rob Stone, are you kidding me? Rob Stone's a sportscaster. Uh, Nicolette Sheridan, who you might remember from Desperate Housewives. Malcolm Jamal Warner from The Cosby Show. And let's just end it right there. And let's go to the tape, shall we? Let's just go to the tape. Uh, let's see here. Boom. And uh, I've got some uh, some stuff to show you. Some things to show you here. Battle of the Network of Stars. Boom. Oh dear. Let me. There's a. There's a really good. Um, a really good playlist here, and this is the one. That's a long one. Okay, I might as well start off by showing you the, the most probably famous moment in Battle of the Network Stars. It's the first episode, maybe the second, and there's been a, a tremendous controversy, okay, on the, on the show. And the controversy is that the NBC team, instead of waiting in the handoff of the batons in the running race, they gave it to a guy, like, a hundred feet before the handoff area, so they would have a huge advantage. And they called a foul on them. There was a huge amount of controversy. So finally, finally, uh, Robert Conrad, who's known as this big tough guy, he says, "Why don't NBC should be disqualified?" Uh he says, "Why don't me and Gabe Kaplan, the team captains, race each other?" That's the way to do it, man to man. Let me see if I can show you part of this. Well, you're not it's hard to tug of war between ABC and, the, and the CBS. Bob, you haven't been disqualified. I'm the captain of this team. We ran a damn good race. You're right, you did, but you would have finished second had been... Like hell. Like hell. Like hell. Like hell. That's it. All right. I want to be very happy to get this team out there running with us. We will determine who the best team is. You, you. are going for a little negotiation technicality. That's your captain. He likes the protest. You and I want to run 100 to see the fastest. Yes, yes. Go. All right. Okay, now Gabe Kaplan immediately says yes. And anyone looking at these two guys, Robert Conrad is in amazing shape. He was a bodybuilder. He did all his stunts on, well, well, I mean, the guy is just a physical specimen. Gabe Kaplan is known as a comedian and Mr. Cotter. And Kaplan immediately just, yeah, yeah, let's go. You and me, 100 yards. All right, well, let me just show you what happened. Let, now, one thing that Robert Conrad probably didn't know, Gabe Kaplan regardless of how he looks, is a kid from New York and played tons of basketball. He was an amazing pickup basketball player. Well, here's what happened. Runners, take your marks. Get set. Looks kind of even, doesn't it? 
Yeah, hold on to your hat. <laughs> And pandemonium ensued because nobody, I mean nobody, thought Gabe Kaplan could ever beat Robert Conrad in anything athletic. And here's, here's how Robert Conrad paid it off. All right, dude. Congratulations. You saved our show. And according from Silverman, the cancellation was immediate if you're lost. That's the way... I like it. Best man wins. Best team, CBS won, or NBC rather, best captain won. That's the way I like it. Okay, the competition goes on. Thank you. Then that's, of course, Howard Cosell with his, his usual uh, aplomb, if you will. Did I just say aplomb on my show, this show? Let me see if I can find. Uh, Robin Williams, by the way, was also on Battle of the Network Stars. Let me see if I can find this top 10 thing. Uh, because, there. Oh, by the way, here's Heather Locklear. And uh, I'll get to it in a second. Here's Heather Locklear and Heather Thomas in the dunk tank. Uh, there's a top 10 thing. It might be in a playlist that I have. Uh, there's uh, some super hottie. This is the one with David Letterman on it. And uh, let me just see if I can... <laughs> They would always do a big intro of all the stars. Of the recent series in the beginning, Mac Lane's So Howard Cassell would always give it his big, you know, send up. Where's the CBS shows uh, that we can see David Letterman? So that's Welcome Back, Cotter. That's ABC there. Uh, let's see here. He's Team Captain. Hey, Rio Okay, here we go. Here we go. Is it not obvious that they had lots of what we might call hotties on these programs? From the incredible Hulk. And incredible Hulk. Lou I didn't see Letterman in that lineup. Hold on. Battle of the Network Stars. That's ABC. Unless, uh, well, let's see here. Beautiful place. You can see it as there he was. Okay, so just before McLean Stevens. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We'll get to Letterman. He's my guy, you know. Okay, enough of that. Uh, let me go back up here to this really good uh, playlist I've got. By the way, you can watch all of these in their entirety on YouTube. Uh, fear not. You can see them all in their entirety. You know, unedited and... Uh, Welcome to Admissions. Oh, God, this lady's voice is just wants to kill you. Uh, let's see, clips to Terry Cobb, Linda Carter, showing only the segments. Where was the top? There's one called Top 10 that's got something on it that you just, you simply won't believe. Um, 
Well, let me see if I can find it like this. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Come on now. There you go. Vintage highlights, top 10. Boom. Come on. All right, now I'm going to show you something that you're not going to believe here. You're simply Tonight, not going to believe it. But this is a good... Here are the um, commissioners Rainbow, that they had Jordan, on this program. Bob Gibson, famous. They had major league dudes as the commissioners. I don't know why, but they just did. Here's Ron Howard. That was great. Oh, There's Ron Howard. Howard yeah. Yeah. He's a puppy. There's Kurt Russell. Russell. Mark Harmon, who actually was a college quarterback. There's Letterman. Letterman went up against Billy Crystal in the obstacle course. Now keep the obstacle course in mind because that's the thing I want to show you here. And when you see who dominated, I'm not talking about winning at once. I'm talking about dominating the obstacle course in the Battle of the Network Stars against guys like Mark Harmon, who was a college quarterback, and Kurt Russell, who was a professional baseball player at one time. I mean, you wait. This is the Simon Says portion of the program. Simon Says, stable. Mr. T would not play. I mean, he he was really good at this game. Uh, the dunk tank was always popular because the girls got dunked into the tank, and we'll show you some of that shortly. Okay, this is the part that I want to show you. Now, you are. this is the guy right here that dominated. Remember a guy by the name of Chachi? Maybe Charles in Charge? I, I'm going to show you. You, you know, you think I'm just check this out. Amazing. One of the best performers in the battle, Scott Baio from Happy Days, a legend on the obstacle course. Winning it several times, all the way to rock that they have in. Wow! Are, are you looking at the movie bars? Ooh! This is not how I did the battle, I'm going to press out. He destroyed people. He did, Scott Baio, I mean, not, a, not necessarily a fan, not necessarily not a fan. He destroyed the competition, and I mean destroyed them in the obstacle court. It was, it was almost like, hey, it's Scott Baio, it's over. It's just over. Um, they always had wacky beginning sketches on Battle of the Network Stars, and then they would do some form of, here's the CBS team. Now, it's important to point out that at one point they tried breaking up the shows uh, in the um, sort of the relaunches that I refuse to mention, but they, they didn't do it by network. They broke it up cop shows and uh, kid shows and mysteries, and it just didn't have the same... Uh, let me see. Let's get, uh, here's a little quick Linda Carter clip from Battle of the Network Stars. Just, Welcome to admissions. Just to give you a little idea adventures. of what this uh, show is really and about. And lustrous Linda Carter, the Wonder Woman. She, by the way, as she has to be in her role, a very good athlete. Let's look for this look at Linda Carter's beautiful start again. And let's ask my friend Rona Barrett, the Hollywood. Yeah, okay. Rona Barrett was on it and, uh. That's kind of what the show was about. Stop that. Stop that. I don't want that happening right now. Uh, let, me, let me show you something else to show you just exactly what this show is about. Uh, let's see. 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 Let's
in, Welcome to uh, admissions in and the program. Adventures. Always had to. Lockman, quickly, Heather into the boat. Place position at the moment. But no, Heather Lockley. Here we go. Here's Heather Locklear in the dumb tank. The best assignment you ever had. You got that right. <laughs> Howard, if Harmon hits the target, Howard, I'll be And this is Mark Harmon, who played quarterback, I think, at UCLA. He's on NCIS, as most of you probably know. Oh, he just drills it the first time. Three points. And then we all get to watch Heather get out of the tank and try to keep her floating. Here's that last throw by Harmon. Let's see. Gene Smith, Cheryl Teague, Tracy Scott. We got Farrah Fawcett here. Let's take a look at Farrah Fawcett, and then we'll be just about done. I don't. Welcome to admission. I don't think I need to belabor this anymore. Farrah Fawcett Majors trying to be Sandra Palmer. There we go. At Darien. But these girls aren't geese. They're getting ready. Getting ready for the running. It would be doing the same thing if we had come in and we had No, we would have said, okay. You know what? That's right. So maybe we should. I mean, maybe we should discuss it. Why is he saying no? From Garden City, Long Island. Watch Farrah Fawcett Majors. This girl's from Texas and she's an athlete. Well, you can tell she's played some golf, Ira. That's a pretty good swing, but it was just uh, too hard. She couldn't throttle it down enough and knocked it over the green. Yeah, Still yeah. in all, looks like the best effort we've seen thus far, and we're in the final round of the competition now. The distance from... Yeah, we got Linda Carter here. Welcome to Admissions and We've 15 Adventures. We've already seen Adventures. that. There's no reason to say that. Forget, if you will, the Olympic Games, Monday Night Football, Championship Fights, conjure instead with the notion of Wonder Woman. Linda Carter. Oh! Oh! I had to have a training session with Linda Carter. Long day from 6.30 to 8 every morning. There's makeup, wardrobe, having the hair done. She starts shooting at 8 in the morning. She is in virtually every scene. There I guess maybe she's in the obstacle course here. Oh, no, tug of war. ABC is very young. Look at it, look at it. They're staying with it. They're staying with it. It's showing the screen. Anyway, that's kind of the deal there with Battle of the Network Stars. Uh, super popular, uh, super titillating, um, pretty much. But you can watch all the episodes on YouTube and you can see them. They're, they're actually much better than this because there's a lot of interplay between all of the celebrities and it's for fun, but it's really not and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, hopefully you've got on the spirit of the whole thing here as we bring you a oh let's say something from a time capsule which was the I don't know how to say it without making it vulgar so I'm just going to say the sexy and crazy battle of the network stars there's one of the battle of network stars where the female contestants had uh, uh, there was a um that was a, like a like a like a vinyl foam co uh, coated uh, pole that they were trying to slide across before they got knocked into the water, and it was just it was just uh, a lot of uh, tight fitting clothing and water and uh, macho stuff from the guys and stuff of that nature. So battle that ladies and gentlemen was the phenomenon that was and i don't think you'll ever see it again battle of the of the network stars because this was during the the running craze and the fitness craze of the 70s it was also during the threes company era and the charlie's angels era where they were really trying to play up sexuality as much as they could and let me tell you battle of the network stars they put the pedal to the metal on all of that. So there you go. Battle of the Network Stars. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Oh, dear. Let's get to our, our, uh, our uh, chat because uh, at uh, 8 p.m., sorry, 7 
it's no 8 p.m. Eastern on Levyverse. You've got the replayables, and I think there might be an Uncle Rico on the Shuli Network. Um, watch whichever one you want. Uh, but the most important thing is I have to be done by that time because at that time, no one will be watching this program. Okay. Uh, um, let's see, Russ Welling. I got to catch back up to where I was. Um, I'm, I might as well just put all of uh, Woody's happy birthday greetings there because he deserves it. Hey, Tom, says Anthony Schultz. Hello, Anthony. How are you, brother? Uh, it's not till Sunday. Ah. Oh. Uh, Brett Hollywood there. Um, Terry Nee says a Tom Gully show 20 ounce mug can hold a 16 ounce Coors Light. Skull! Uh, John Ziermite says I'm all too familiar with that nightmare. Aku, thanks. Uh, hey, Jared, he knows the language. Up your nose with a rubber hose. Yes, the sweat hogs. The sweat hogs. Mm hmm. West Bravo says, I'm looking for a good stick welder, but we'll probably buy a, a Chinese POS. Point of sale, I'm sure is what that means. Uh, Randy says, happy birthday, Woody. Uh, Aku says, it's mog meant for heavy plate, a quarter inch minimum. I'm welding body steel, 20 gauge, which is a little, it's a little bit thinner than, say, um, your uh, stainless steel hot dog uh, cart, which is usually uh, 18 gauge. Or what your fenders are made of. I gotcha. Aku, you're, you're a dude, man. You're building, fixing and stuff. Hamad said, I was four in 88, but I, I don't think I remember this show. New info. Well, watch the episodes because you're going to like them. Born in 79, used to love these, says Anthony Schultz. They were great. Howard Cosell. You see this man, number 30, Lawrence McCutcheon. Um, I wrote Howard Cosell a note one time, a letter after I read his autobiography, and he wrote me a very kind letter back, and I still have it. Uh, Howard. Howard. Hey now, says SG Fanboy. Hey, SG, what's shaking, brother? Gully Heads Unites, says Ronald Bateman. Yeah, you guys unite. Do that somewhere. Uh, my birthday is next Wednesday, says Hamhead. I am now officially in the last week of my 30s. Well, I'll trade you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Aku Mogan says it's a MIG welder meant for heavy plate while I'm welding a 20 inch gauge or roughly the six months. I, did I just already do that one? Uh, Gilman says I remember the tug of war. Oh, it was brutal. The tug of war was always brutal. Aku says, haven't touched stick in a dog's age. Oxytorches have a habit of lighting me on fire. Aku Mugen says, I have a Hobart Handler 140 decent. Fix my Jeep TJ frame with it. Uh, says West Bravo. Does anybody else feel like we're intruding on the guy car talk thing here? Do you? Uh, Anthony Schultz says, love this. Thank you, Tom. I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. Uh, Woody says O.J. Simpson was part of the superstars, but he lost the lesser known Bronco Chase. <laughs> uh, hey, oh, uh, Brian Clowder says, hello. Howdy, everybody. Hello, Brian. Good to see you. Foxy ladies, says Hugh. Uh, Gilman says Three's Company was always a misunderstanding. Loved uh, Mr. Furley. Yes, the wacky hijinks of Three's Company. And the uh, dramatic acting talents of <laughs> John Ritter. Uh, Gilman says Three's Company was... Oh, I already read that. Uh, Chris Abel says it was like the live version of Sears Catalog. You got that right, Chris Abel's. Play it. Replayables in 11 and a half minutes on Levyverse. Um, Ron Palillo. I don't know if Ron Palillo was on it or not. He would have been a liability, though. He doesn't look like that great of an athlete, says uh, Wes Bravo. Uh, Julian Zeezers, the MGM Lion versus the NBA Peacock. Didn't live up to the hype. No, it did not. Uh, Woody is saying hello to the Modelo Monsignor, Chris Abels. Uh, Woody says, I forgot about Simon Says. I did, too, till I started researching this. Um... 
let's see here people saying hello and hello and hello we like a cheerful chat room we do p diddy hosted hollywood events too but i think the challenges were a little different yes and the uh the rules committee was the federal authorities. Gabe Kaplan was big in the poker world, wasn't he? I, I, I would not doubt it, but I do not know that. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Dabble verse reference. Yes. <laughs> Joker fish. Uh, Vince the parasite. <laughs> I like the professional good, I believe. See, oh, snap. Bravo. Cheers. Uh, who didn't have a crush on Linda Carter, especially after that fixing her swim? Anyway, um, yeah, Linda Carter. Woody says, I loved him in Ice Cream Man. Uh, Wes Bravo says something that I, I um, agree with but cannot put on screen. Uh, <laughs> Wes, Wes you've, you're going to get 100% agreement there. But my mom watches this show. Uh, Anthony Schultz says, Adrian Barbeau is beautiful. Yeah. Wes Bravo says, Catwoman, Lee Merriweather. If you see Lee Merriweather in something, watch it because she is absolutely striking. She's a former Miss America and she's really purdy. Knockout, uh, says the show. Hot Lips. Yes. Loretta Sweat. Um, Dino My. That's right. JJ Walker. JJ Walker. Jimmy Walker. Um, actually gave David Letterman his first writing comedy jobs in Los Angeles and Letterman never forgot it and would always have him on his show. Anthony Schultz, she was one of three Catwomen. Well, there was Lee Merriweather. There was, of course, Julie Newmar. And on my old show, the autographed photo that Julie sent me because I said so many nice things about her online uh, was in the background. There was Eartha Kitt... I thought there was one other one, but I could be wrong. But the, the, that, there's three right there. Um, Gilman says, I love the rubber shark from the original Batman movie. <laughs> yeah, that thing is so hokey. Mr. Battery on the shoulder, Robert Conrad. You got that right. Eartha Kit and, yes, uh, Kami. Snake Pliskin. Yeah, Billy Crystal was on Soap. He was also on uh, Saturday Night Live. Um Gilman Kurt Russell was also on an episode of Gilligan's Island. He was also a lead character in the adventures of Jamie McPeters. Uh, McPeters. Back in the day. Back with Ed Hurley. That's way back there. And the computer wore tennis shoes and all that stuff as well. Uh, Billy Crystal Soap, yes. Terry Nee says, whoa, I owe you, Woody, I owe you a Coke. Uh, Billy Crystal, noted blackface wearer. Yeah, he did wear black. Uh, Crystal, let's see. Dave, yes. Isn't Joyce DeWitt from Indiana? It's funny that you ask that, uh, Randy, because not only is uh, Joyce DeWitt a graduate of Speedway High School in Indianapolis, which is, of course, in the area right next to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the teams there are named the Spark Plugs. She also went to a major university. Which one could it have been? <sighs> The Hulk show did suck. You're right, Tom. Well, the Hulk, he, it, Bill Bixby was actually, as Banner was actually good, but the rest of the show is, and, and the scripts weren't terrible, but the effects were just awful. Terrible Hulk, how dare you, Tom? How dare you? Hey, look, Lou Ferrigno is a LinkedIn friend of mine, so just lay off the man. He's a very successful businessman and uh, overcame a lot at a hearing problem. And so let's, he, he didn't make the show. He didn't make the makeup. He didn't do all that. He just showed up with muscles. Woody from Syracuse says Shatner versus Cassell bat battle of the network wigs. <laughs> uh, Hamhead said Bruce Banner had a Ted Bundy vibe in the show. Kind of. Uh, Wes, my favorite Kurt Russell was Jack Burton, Big Trouble in Little China, McCready. The thing, a close second. Yeah, when old Jack Burton, have you paid your dues, Jack? Yeah, the check is in the mail. Uh, that's incredible. Wes remembers Sarah Purcell. Well done, Wes. Man. Gilman says Half Pint from Little House on the Prairie was on it. Yes, who later became the president of the Screen Actors Guild. 
Uh, Hamhead said, West Brad, well, I'm a Captain Ron kind of guy. Yeah, overboard. He's good in overboard, too. Woody from Syracuse says, I saw Joan Van Ark on there. For the love of God, don't show a photo of her now. Nightmare fuel. <clears throat> Woody, let's just say she's had a little work done. I think that would suffice, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Gilman says, Heather Thomas, hell yeah, I can still see her in a bikini from the opening of, of The Fall Guy. Tonight, Colt finds out that Halloween isn't all tricks and treats on The Fall Guy. Um, Wes Bravo says, geez, what a non-concept for a show. It would be easier to explain the dabble verse to my daughter. Toby McGroby says, hey guys, sorry I'm late. Of course, by my own standards for lateness. You're fine, Toby. Nobody's ever late to the Tom Gully show. Anthony Schultz is back. Hello, Anthony. How you doing? Wes Bravo says, though Bug does like Tukey. Bought a Tukey's Tukey shirt. I, I have no idea what that means. Brian Clowder says, not going to lie, did not think he was going to win or run faster than that guy. Nobody did. Nobody did. And then he just freighted, freighted him. Just, it was awesome. I saw that live. And I was amazed, but you know what? I liked Robert Conrad even more after he came over, congratulated him for winning and being the better man. And it was, that's the way I like it. And I think they played That's the Way, Uh-Huh, Uh-Huh, I Like It, going to commercial when they were showing the slow-mo replay. Uh, let's see, those two are bonding. Gabe Kaplan was an athlete, mind blown. JC says, uh, Jared, I learned how I'd run that fast in New York City. Basketball players were always trying to rob me, so I was always running away. Uh, well, Jared, you're known for your many skills in the New York City area. Um, let's see here. Zooted out of his mind, of course. Um, uh, Terry Nee says, I miss a plum. Yeah. I, I, I like to occasionally throw in a $5 cigar word. Uh, Jared said that was clever. Uh, thanks. I couldn't agree more on Kurt, Kurt Russell. There's a comic book where Snake Pliston actually meets Jack Burton in the comic book. Uh, it's just a, like a quick page or two, but it's, they do meet each other. Um, Aloha Kahuna. Good to see you here. Kahuna. Woody says seventies freaking cringe. Hello Kahuna. Big K Kahuna. Uh, love the show, brother. Thank you, Brian. If you're talking to me, you could be talking to Chris Abels. You could be talking to Jenna. You could be, it really could be anybody, but I'm glad that there's a show you like, and I'm hoping that it's this one. Uh, Lyndon says, Tom, you mean to tell me OJ didn't make the cut? OJ may have been in one of these. He may have been the Bruce Jenner was usually Caitlyn Jenner now, but he was usually the sidekick, uh, for Howard Cosell. John Davidson was part of it too. I mean, there was a bunch of people. Um, let's see people saying hi, people saying hi. Wes is ugh. Those clothes are wretched. Uh, Ryan, uh, in says, I watched this program. I was a teenager and we only got four TV stations. Same here in till we got cable. I love those clothes. Great memories. I, I'm sensing some of them were velour. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan, I remember watching this. So thank you for reminding me how old I am. Well, we do that on this show. I did the dust bowl yesterday. That would have made you feel young. Um, Wes Bravo says, I remember being forced to wear that polyester stuff when my Didi Ramon haircut. <laughs> uh, Gilman says, love Mr. T. I even ate his cereal. Oh, boy. Uh, why is that guy wearing a stall helm? I don't know. It's, it's just Steve Carroll interviewing Mr. T on Daily Show is classic. I love the overwrought color commentary. That's what Cassell was great at, was acting like it was the Olympics or something when it was just, uh, you know. Uh, Wes Bravo says, when it was funny, remember when they interviewed the kid who had the football helmet specially made because of his giant head? Yeah, the, the, the Daily Show. Bring back feathered hair. Farrah was the best. Yeah, we all had the poster. Um, oh, my God. I thought we were... Um, Thought we were done, but we got some more here, and I've only got two minute and a half. Uh, the kid with the special skull, uh, just tight fitting clothing and water. Ha uh ha. -huh. Brian Clowder says, I think my wife sent you something. I don't know what it would be, but on email or something, I'd be happy to accept anything she says. Uh, I've had people send me 
uh, two gallon containers of mayonnaise. Not just one of them, two of them. I've gotten a samurai sword. I, I've, people have sent me all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh my God, what a huge hit. Replayables, yeah, Replayables is coming up and uh, Rico as well. So uh, I gotta get out of here pretty quick. Got a great show again, good evening. Gullerinos. Um, Chris Abel says a 16 ounce Coors. I'll take two. It's a 20 ounce mug. It really is. Uh, 32 ought. Let's see. I used to MIG weld and stick weld. Uh, I'll pop in. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Tom, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm glad something's awesome. Update, update beard surviving shirt is smoldering. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aku. Uh, drink will do BK. Uh, let's see. Oh, homie, don't play that. It says, hey, Tom Gully. Uh, that's the better half of the uh, replayables right there. Uh, 80s Incredible Hulk. These effects aren't that special, butthead. <laughs> they aren't. I used to be able to run like the wind. It's like, let's cut away to a shirt being torn. My lo wife loves Overboard. I do, too. It's a good romantic movie. Didn't they remake Overboard? I think they tried to. I used to be known as Hurricane, now just a puff of hot air. Man, you guys, I got to get out of here because these other shows are starting. Um, let me see. Super chat. Uh, yeah, I think Shuli's getting a little sick of you guys super chatting about my show. Uh, time is never going to read the chat I just made. Um, let's see here. Let's see. I'm not done willing. I was like, okay, so uh, go to the Tom Gully Show. Go to the store. Um, please like, share, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, not one penny. Uh, you can go to paypal.me slash Tom Gully Show. We desperately need the contributions because YouTube's messing with my viewing hours. Um, other than that, I'm so appreciative of all you guys being here. You rock so hard. Uh, I wish these other shows um, weren't right on top of us, and I'm not blaming them, but uh, then we could go a little bit longer. However, with all that being said, there's only one thing left to say, and that is, till next time, We'll see you next time.